who was Laura Pearls to you in your experience of her? In my experience, Laura was a kind, caring, loving, understanding woman slash therapist that knew what the hell she was doing when it came to being in contact with me. And I'm gonna project the other, others. Okay. And what was Laura in your life? How did you share time or space or what did you experience together? Well, I met Laura in um, Germany um, at um, the home of, of uh, Jerry Cogan and Willie. And uh, we broke bread together and uh, if I remember during that time, she did some work with people and I had the opportunity to observe her work. Um, so my, my time with her was rather short in comparison probably to others. And at the same time, that time that we had was just full of life, full of humor, uh, full of contact, full of excitement. Uh, so, but most of all, just thinking about this now, I enjoyed her humor. She, from my perspective, she would, she would, her, her, her humor just came out of whatever that was, that was going on. She could, boop, I would say she could humorize it. And, and in no form or fashion did I experience anything that she did as a put down, but just and I'm thinking about her now, I start laughing, but as, as a uh, just humor. Okay. And when you say you had a short time, do you have any memories that stand out either from personal time that you shared or pieces of work that you witnessed or participated in? I did not get the opportunity to work with her. I, I had the opportunity to observe her working. And I remember being upset because I didn't take the opportunity or whatever to, to work with her. Uh, the work that she did with, in, in, in my observation of her, what was just clear and concise, and it was more of a, a process of one person or two people having a conversation and one person just filtering through that conversation with the process that promoted the person who was doing most of the talking uh, to become more aware of him herself at, at that particular point in time. It wasn't anything that was really entangled or, or working. It was just a flowing that took place between she and the person she was working with. And again, even though it was a short time, would you say that she had an impact or an influence on you in your work or in your person? Yeah, I, I, most definitely. There, there, there was a, uh, we did a Zoom with uh, a group and, um, there was a person who had worked with Laura and he uh, he's in Philadelphia and he's been doing a stop for a pretty little while. He's 80 some, 80, 88, 89 years of age. And I was, he was observing me working and he gave me feedback in that he said, you're working like Laura Pearls. And I mean, I, I stopped for a minute, you know, once he said that I went, yeah. And we talked a little bit about my process at the time, which was really and truly outstanding. Am I ask, answering your question? Yeah, yeah. Well, what did it mean when he said you're working like Laura? What, what do you recall that he was witnessing there? If I remember correctly, and I think I do, he spoke to how I was 
picking up on every little thing that the person was taking place, that, that that person was emitting, that was taking place at the time as I observed the person without going in the direction in reference to what's good, what's right, what's bad. I just pointed out to the person and wait and see what the person chose to do with that. And like I said, there's also like a little bit of an element of storytelling. I've noticed that a lot of Laura's students or people who experienced her tend to have a favorite story. Do you have a particular <laughs> one that comes to mind? I do. When we were at uh, the Colgans, uh, I had the opportunity of sharing a bedroom with Laura. And we got settled and she said, she said to me, Ernest, don't you come over here into my bed? And I said, I won't. She said, oh, shucks. <laughs> That's something that stood out for me, still does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were Laura's roomie? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. And I'm, I mean, I'm thinking now, I'm remembering what you said as well. I liked a lot how you said it during your interview. So I'm wondering if I might go back and use sure. that piece as well. Um, just how you spoke about feeling seen by her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she had beautiful eyes and she saw quite well. And she spoke to what she saw uh, in reference to what you were doing at the time. She, she, she was there right with you in the present. And then she would work to assist you in getting in touch with what was going on with you as body as you were experiencing yourself while sitting in front of her. So, she would see you, and I, I, I mean, see you contingent upon what you were doing at the time you were doing what it was that you were doing. And she didn't label it. She didn't give it some sense of you must be, uh, this must happening or whatever. She would just stay with you and allow you to uh, work through whatever was going with you in front of her. Okay. Now, I know I've known you for about an hour and a half, um, but I am aware that you are the only melanated individual that I have spoken with who worked with Laura. And otherwise it's a very white set of people. And I, I, I kind of want to ask, and I'm really bad at this, was that ever an issue with Laura? Do you think, how did she understand cultures and race in your experience of her? My thinking is that she did not understand culture and race. She understood humans. She understood differences. She understood similarities. She understood the humanness of man and woman or men and women. That's, that's, that was my experience with her. And it was for me very different. Uh, so it goes back again to her seeing me as I presented myself a human being and that's basically the way I experienced myself with her as being a human being uh, with all of the issues that I had contingent but all of that contingent upon my uh, conditioning and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I mean, I'm curious because I've heard people, you know, describing all of her stops, you know, from World War II Germany to apartheid South Africa to unofficially or recently desegregated United States. And I just wondered if that was ever an element or an issue. Between the two of us? Or 
for her, for me. Uh, well, and your experience of how she held spaces and worked with people. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I think you, 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 in your question, you hit it right on the head. And that, that is how she worked with people, how she worked with humans, uh, what they presented, uh, how they did, how they were dealing with their stuff as they perceived the world. And Laura would be just really and truly present with him. I mean, eating with her, she was just present with me. Uh, that whole clan was, and that's it. You know, the, the Colgan family uh, were. Uh, now, I, 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 um, I don't know why I'm saying no, but <laughs> anyway, it was. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> it may just be like, nope, not a thing. It wasn't a yeah, thing. I, I, and, and, and you know, please believe me, I would have picked up on whatever was going on in reference to that particular arena. And I would have said, are you, you know, I would have asked the question, are you discriminating against me because of, and I, and I have done that in many settings, but that was not something that stood out for me in Frankfurt, Germany at the Colgan's house with Laura Pearl. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I've, I've heard it's quite a figure in a lot of Gestalt spaces, so. What's the figure? Uh, discrimination. Oh, my word. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. That that's a, that is actually like the next subset of conversations that I would like to have. But. And it's and, and from my perspective, it happens without awareness. Mm -hmm. And if you point it out, it's not happening. So in that particular position, you are less than because you are experiencing what no one else is experiencing. So it must be your stuff mm -hmm. and your stuff is less than. Yeah, that's when Gestalt stops being relational and all of a sudden it's it's all inside your head, right? Right. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You look at relational and when does it start and when does it stop? Mm -hmm. yeah. It stops being convenient and it's a nerve. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I don't know about Laura in particular, if there's any other thought that you would like to add or anything else that comes up for you. I sometimes ask if people who maybe spent a bit more time with her got a sense of how she understood Gestalt would be going forward, because most of the people I've interviewed met her towards the end of her life. And if she, if they got an idea that she had a sense of where this was going to end up when we're sitting here talking in 2021. My thinking is I think Laurel be disappointed in, in reference to where we are now in looking at Gestalt therapy. Um, disappointed how so? Yeah, uh, that from my perspective, my projections, that it is basically for people of lighter pigmentation, possibly to people with lots of money. It, it, for me, I would say she would be experiencing disappointment because it hasn't moved into the arena of, of dealing with the masses of the people who could actually use Gestalt, the process of Gestalt and understanding themselves and looking at what they may need to do to pull themselves up a little bit or to understand what they are doing to themselves and hurting themselves and also to be more aware of what the system is doing to perpetuate that. So to take ownership of your process and then to understand what's going on out there and then be able to deal with it 
from the perspective of, I know this is what you're doing. It is not my stuff. This is what I need to do to take care of myself in this particular process. And what you are doing is what you have to do. And I don't like it. And I'm going to keep taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I've wondered myself about the part of, you know, being an immigrant, but like a forced immigrant with the fleeing the Holocaust, how this is now out of the price range of people who are currently in her very same circumstances from different parts of the world and how it's coming from those kinds of traumas and social circumstances and is inaccessible to the people who are experiencing them now. Well said. Where it would make more sense. Yes. Well said. I, I'm glad you said that. A lot of Thank people you. have said, you know, that, oh yes, you know, she knew it was academically solid and she knew it was gonna transcend. But I, I, that's, I mean, that is where most of my interest lies is in the social piece. Yes. And where it could go besides into private institutes, training people to do private practice with private pay clients. When I was, when I was in school uh, at, uh, in, in Atlanta, I was working on a psychiatric social work degree. I was told that in this setting where I had to do my internship that the stalk therapy really would not work for people who were experiencing psychosis and people of darker they didn't say people they said black people people of darker pigmentation and, and all of that kind of good stuff and I said this that's bull so part of what I did there in in in, in, in my process of acquiring my degree was to attempt to show similarities and humanness uh, in reference to, well, looking at human beings. Yeah, we have differences, but, uh, and at the same time, we have so many, 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 many similarities. So, I mean, you're just looking at pigmentation. I mean, my heart can fit your heart or your body if it is of the right, whatever it needs to be. So I remember going off a little bit, taking, uh, working with some students from Emory University while being in school, uh, uh, Clark Atlanta University, Atlanta University at the time. And we were arguing about uh, the class at uh, uh, Atlanta University. We we're arguing about people who have rhythm and people who do not have rhythm. And I said, everyone has rhythm. so. I was supposed to write a paper and I decided not to write a paper on who does and who doesn't have rhythm. I thought I'd just do a demonstration to show that we all have rhythm. It's just the rhythm is different. And I started off with, if you can walk, you have rhythm. If you can move on, you have rhythm. And so I worked with a group of students from Emory University and they were doing clogging and some other dancing. And I asked them if they would be willing to teach some of the black students how to do that. And they said yes, and I asked the black students if they would be willing to teach those those uh, students from Emory how to do their dance. And they were saying the students from Emory didn't have rhythm. And I said that's crazy. So anyway, we set it all up in a presentation. They came over from Emory and they did their clogging and their movement and all this other kind of stuff and. The kids with darker pigmentation did all their stuff and so forth. And I asked the, the cloggers to teach the kids who had darker pigmentation how to do that. They couldn't do it. They could not get their back straight to do what was being done. And they couldn't understand that. And so I asked them if they would teach the kids from Emory how to move the waistline and all this other kind of good stuff. And they began to learn quicker than the students, the black students who were attempting to learn how to clock. And so my conclusion was, and I just made it clear that we all have rhythm, but then we have to look at where rhythm comes from. And I was looking at rhythm comes from agriculture in reference to how we harvest, in reference to how we celebrate, in reference to the type of foods we grow and all that kind of good stuff. So 
I, I was very proud of myself in doing that. And, and that's what I sometimes don't see with Gestalt. And that is dealing with differences, but yet and still similarities. And let's work with differences, knowing that that doesn't make you better than or less than, less than it's just you have a difference and you still have rhythm when it comes down to that particular perspective. And so my experience with Laura is that she, she, she experienced people. She dealt with people. She was perpetuating that. And I think I'm going to say this, and I may be absolutely and positively incorrect, but I'm going to say it anyway. I think she got pushed to the side some because she was looking at similarities and differences, not from a negative perspective, but from a learning perspective. Just because you have this difference doesn't mean that you can't learn to do that. It just means you have a difference. So don't put, you down, put, don't put yourself down because you have differences. And don't put yourself down because you have similarities. Just know that we are human beings with differences and similarities. And that's all there is to it. And I didn't perceive her as attempting to be on the mountain to proclaim Gestalt therapy. And this is for, you know, it's just, she was, a, from my perspective, a person who saw you as a human, as a body, and what do you need for yourself to survive in this world? I'm just, I'm imagining, this is totally in my mind. I'm hearing you as a jazz musician and her as a classically trained pianist. Yes. Okay, maybe you have some different rhythms that you prefer, but it doesn't mean you can't hear and you can't appreciate the other person. Oh, I, I will say I did teach her how to handball. Oh, okay. <laughs> how did that go? <laughs> it went, I, I just thought about that in the kitchen. We were, we were talking about rhythmic patterns and, and uh, she, she asked me, what was I speaking of? So I, I, I said, handball, handball, where you been? And she says, what is that? Something to that effect. And uh, so I did some handball for her. And she was, uh, she got into it. Do you know what that is? Would it be okay if I demonstrate it? Sure, please. I'm very, very curious now. Okay. I'm going to back off a little bit. And I want you to know I'm going to be hitting my legs, okay, with my hands. So it goes like this. So. You can sing with that. Hambo, hambo, where you been? You can just go on. And uh, she did some of that with me. I forgot all about that. Thanks a lot. So Laura Pearls was hamboning in Jerry and, and Willie's kitchen. Right. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. Yeah. Hmm. With Shorty there to observe. Do you know about Shorty? Is Shorty the dog? The dog. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Short stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I'm catching up. I'm like 50 years behind, but I'm catching up. I know that Shorty was Jared Willie's dog. All right. Well, is there anything you would like to add right now? this point no no i'm good well, i 